Just give me liberty Oh, give me liberty Welcome, Brian Zollinger, Representative Brian Zollinger from the good state of Idaho, the House of Representatives. Uh, we got the Turn to Liberty audience here uh, all over the country, actually, although I'm, I'm in Tampa, Florida. Um, I just want to give a little background to the folks. Uh, what we're going to be talking about is the NDAA, or the National uh, Defense Authorization Act, signed by Obama, I believe in, I want to say 2000 and, let's make a pull a year off my notes here, 2011. Yep, December 31st. <laughs> One of the latter, latter acts of that, that president of ours. And uh, Representative Zollinger is out of um, Idaho, of course. He actually graduated out of Jacksonville, got his Juris Doctorate from Florida Coastal School. He also has a Bachelor of Science in Accounting, and this is his first term in the in Idaho legislature. Is this your first uh, session, too, is it? it? It's actually my second session. Second year, first session, so second session. Right. Okay. So, so uh, good for you and welcome to winning. And, and it just ironically, we just had a special election for a Florida House seat. And the gentleman's name was Brian um, uh, Zemina. Brian Zemina. So I have all these, I have all these bumper stickers. Uh, BZ for Liberty. I should probably send you a couple. You yeah, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> ironically, I, th I thought it was kind of funny when I was running across your name. So um, the sad story is we have to have this meeting. We have to have this talk. You, sir, have to write up this bill and submit it for a uh, vote in your, in your state to protect your dear citizens from right. the federal government. So right. for, for those of you who aren't quite up the learning curve yet, we have these, I don't have a constitution handy to, to swing around in, in front of me, but we have this thing called the constitution. We expect to ha have our rights protected. You know, we institute governments to protect our rights given to us from God. Yeah, very good, sir. <laughs> I, can point handy, some, right? I can point to the bookcase. I know I got something there. There you go. <laughs> so, so we have this expectation the government's here to help, here to protect us, here to protect <laughs> our rights that are given to us from God. But, the, but what's happened is, uh, you know, 200 years of drift, so to speak. The federal government's drifted. The progressives got in charge in the early 1900s when they created their, their utopian efforts to try to save everybody and fix everything. And we yeah. ended up at this point where the executive, the president, has the powers to capture, uh, imprison, and kill without any jurisprudence, no, no trial by jury, no speedy trial. Um, and that's just the definition of uh, totalitarianism if I've ever heard of such a thing, or at very minimal oh, yeah. dictatorship. Um, I think we can be pleased that uh, much of this has not really, as far as we know, been put to use by the executive. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we read, we read words on paper, these things called laws, and you've responded. Um, just for the folks who put you on target, uh, his bill is uh, Idaho House Bill 473, entitled Restoring Constitutional Governance Act of Idaho. You want to give the folks a little rundown on uh, a little bit about your bill, what the likelihood of it getting voted on by the uh, legislature up there? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So where we're at now in Idaho, the process is you have a print hearing. Uh, so we're past the first hurdle in that committee. It's a 15 man committee. I believe it passed unanimously um, And I anticipate I've been promised that we would get a full hearing on this which should be take place sometime next week um, From everyone I'm talking to the coalition that we're gathering. I'm uh, pretty optimistic. We'll actually get it passed Awesome. Is that, is that uh, the State Affairs Committee? Is that, it it is that... will be the State Affairs Committee, and I've spoken personally with Chairman Lurcher, the chairman of that committee, and he's assured me we're going to get a full hearing, which sometimes with these liberty-minded bills is, is tough to get that far. So I'm excited that he's promised the hearing, and I really think if we get a hearing, it's, uh, it's a tough thing to vote against. I mean, <laughs> right. So, yeah. We, we swear an oath, and, uh, yeah. and, and when, uh, when laws yeah. are written that don't fit, uh, our oath to uphold the Constitution, for instance. I know there's other parts of that oath that probably say the statutes and so forth, but in this case, you know, we recognize the higher authority would be, uh, you know, the Constitution's, your states, uh, the United States, both of those. Um, so I, I think this is great. And um, I'll just, if it's all right, I'll just read like the, one of the first major sentences of your, yeah. your bill, of your bill. <clears throat> and I'll try to put on my authoritarian voice, speaking from the position of government. Uh, it is the determination of the Idaho legislature that Idaho is not 
a battlefield subject to the laws of war and that neither Congress nor the President of the United States can constitutionally apply the laws of war to any person in Idaho or citizen of Idaho who is not serving in the land or naval forces or in the militia when the actual service in time of war or public danger. Seems pretty straight up, pretty simple. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if, if I was a lawyer and I had a big shelf of law books over here, I'd go, we already have all these laws, you know? Yeah. We already yeah. you know, control or you know, govern through these. We're not gonna allow this one uh, NDAA take over and throw out all of our laws and all of our procedures. Um, right. That is, that is in a sense, I'm selling your bill. That is in a sense yeah. what we're doing with this bill today. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it seems like a no brainer. In fact, I've got, before we ran the bill, I got an attorney general opinion from our state attorney general's office. And, and they told me first, the likelihood of it ever being happening is, is minimal. But second, if it ever did, they would be ready to you know, fight against it and, and defend um, but we're still going to run the bill to make sure we have it in code in Idaho, a little more secure. Right. And this is, um, and, and, and I don't know if you're a millennial, we'll just say to the millennials who are watching, you know, um, you know, we have these things, these black phones, you know, we have these things in our thumbs right. do these magical acts with our thumb with the stuff right now. But, you know, and there is a process. The process is to have case, a case go before the U.S. Supreme Court to overturn this, this horrible law, the NDAA. Um, mm -hmm. But that takes, it could take decades. And, and like we've right. kind of alluded to, we're not aware that this has been applied to anyone yet. So there's no technically not a victim in place yet. But, right. But if you were going to take over a, a, a nation of people, you know, the people of the United States, the people of Idaho, um, all these mixed people across all 50 states, if you were going to take over a nation, you would start by planning ahead. And having this type of power in the executive office of the U.S. president is, in fact, planning ahead to take over. Absolutely. And do what yeah. you want with, with us here in yeah. most of North America. Um, and I applaud you for being wise. You're the canary in the coal mine. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it goes. Letting us know we're about to get gassed. And... Um, so, so I'm excited about this. Um, I, I, I really, uh, you know, I'm down here in Florida and I'm sure our, our own legislator, le legislature does great things too, but I really do applaud you guys for doing great stuff up there in Idaho. Um, I am aware that I did a little bit of research before our call and I, I see that um, back in, I think it was 2013, your legislature uh, passed what's basically nullification of any future federal firearms laws. Right. If you recall that, uh, but, but, but that's strong, you know, that's, that's, that's a strong, shows a lot of the, the guts you guys have up there to, um, you know, be free and trust your, right. trust your fellow citizen, um, you know, and not police them, let them police themselves. Which, yeah. You know, fabulous. Yeah, we have some great legislators here and we, we just need to keep pushing because <laughs> nullification is an important tool and maintain that state sovereignty is a big thing for sure. You're right. And, and you guys have equal footing as the United States under their constitution and as, as well as the first 13 colonies, as you know, and I always try to, you know, our, our goal of turn to liberty is to educate the masses. And, you know, just because you guys were um, turned into a state, I think in 1964, if I'm remembering correctly, um, around that time frame, um, even though it wasn't 1776, and even though you may not have existed as Idaho prior to the forming of the United States, you entered as a state on equal footing as the other original 13 states, which means right. you, know, you, you have, um, you've been birthed before joining the United States, basically. Yeah. Um, and, and since, and hence, you had to join, and hence that relationship's a voluntary relationship. You could even choose to exit if you chose to as a state. Of course, Theoretically, you right? <laughs> you, I think even legally, you'd have to follow a procedure. Yeah. But, um, you know, you're not a slave. I mean, I, mm -hmm. the state of Idaho is not a slave to the United States. I mean, it's, well, we see how the Civil War went. I mean, that's basically, <laughs> there's some precedents that it's pretty hard to enforce that <laughs> clause to leave the union. So... <laughs> Well, I, I don't wish war on us at all, um, but it also, you know, there's, you know, you read the Constitution. <laughs> there's a time when man has to form a new government from time to time, yep. and um, we're not there yet, thank God. And hopefully, no. we've taken a few steps back in the last couple, in the last uh, 18 months. Um, Trump seems like he's a Boy Scout yeah. of sorts. Um, I think he's he's playing the political card, you know, playing playing the political cards nonstop, but. Um, I think uh, as far as his actions go, hopefully he'll, he'll show restraint and uh, in the end, uh, uh, unwind the power of the president. I would hope yeah. that. We'll we're in a lot better shape than we were 18 months ago. That's for sure. 
Right. And your fate and my fate ought not to be tied to a single person in that office. You know, we should be Absolutely. able to rest assured on, 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 you know, your laws, um, our constitutions and, and yep. not, not these personalities. So, so I guess I want to jump up, jump way back in time. Um, and I, I want to let you know, also, I met with, uh, I spoke with uh, Representative Shepard on his yeah. other, his other bill, um, which is, which I describe as simply, um, putting into statute a process for for nullifying uh federal laws and and um administrative laws and rules and case laws are you familiar with that just by me mentioning that particular yeah document? i am i am okay. i've read his bill so yes yeah. so so you know i see him as like kind of like greasing the skids so those uh rep um those uh, representatives in the legislature who might be hesitant can see, ah, oh, we've done this before, we have a procedure, let's just follow our procedure, let's look at this nullification opportunity. Yeah. Um, which I think is great, because it kind of like normalize the process. I think a lot of these legislatures across the country are real hesitant to get into this, because they just don't want to take the hits, take the knocks on the head. Uh, yeah. But I see Idaho is really being smart, you know, working a multi, multi, uh, strat multi point strategy to, to try to make these things happen, um, which I really, yeah. really think is great. So going way back in time, um, uh, the Weaver family, uh, who were basically killed by out of control uh, FBI agents, went right. through the courts. Um, the deceased were uh, Sammy Weaver and Vicki Weaver, and the survivors were um, the, I don't know the baby's name, but I believe the baby survived. Randy yeah. Weaver himself and uh, another gentleman, Kevin Harris. So, uh, is, you know, you guys have your own, you know, history up there. Is this, um, does this come up yeah. in your in your deliberations that you know the federal government has acted in a violent and unconstitutional manner in the past? Is this part of the justification to help pass these these style bills? It, it is absolutely. So we have the Weaver family, and then uh, during the first initial hearing, it actually came up. So during World War II in Idaho, we had some of those Japanese internment camps where they you know, unconstitutionally, clearly locked up any Japanese, any citizen even that was of Japanese descent in these, uh, in my hometown, in fact, they had a labor camp or a, a camp there where they put these people in during that war, which was basically the same thing we're fighting now. So in that initial hearing, one of the other legislators asked me if a law like this would prevent something like that. And I said, absolutely, that's why we have to do it. And more recently, although it wasn't directly the NDAA, we had the, uh, the Bundy family down in Nevada. Sure. And, right, right next door, and it's, much. it's anticipated that uh, at the full hearing, which should be next week, that Ammon Bundy will be one of the gentlemen that we're going to bring in to testify in favor of this bill. Wow, outstanding. Yeah. Uh, next week, huh? I'll have to see if I can clip that video. It'd be great to see. Yeah, it, him it should be on you know, truth. Should be live online. Yeah. So uh, you know, we'll, we'll shoot you an email when we know the exact time of the hearing. And uh, I believe um, most of the hearing rooms here have live video. So it should be, you should be able to find that. And that's, and you guys are, you know, we're in Florida, we're East Coasters. Um, you have a much more appreciation to um, being in the West, having grazing rights and, and, and uh, range animals, I guess cattle predominantly. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I keep my ears open for Bureau of Land Management, uh, you know, uh, issues in Florida. You know, I've, I've, that's probably a trigger for me. It's just I haven't been yeah. triggered yet down here to act. <laughs> yeah. I, can, I can get at least a half dozen people together for a protest pretty darn quick. But um, <laughs> but out your way, um, Bureau of Land Management's probably uh, a sticker on the side of a door on a truck you see every day coming, you know, going about your day, I suspect. Yep. Um, you know, did you want to speak to, to, to the, you know, the relationship or the feeling towards BLM in Idaho at all? I mean, we've, they've, they've had some, some absolute failures, you know, yeah. Oregon and, and Nevada, like you said, and, and some of the collusions with uh, certain U.S. senators down there in Nevada, it seems like, and even in New York, or ex-New York Senator Hillary Rodham Clinton with the uh, uranium mining uh, rights <laughs> fail right. to a Russian... Yeah. I think it was Fusion GPS. I don't know if it's just shooting off the hip, top of my head. I think that might be actually the name of the company. Um, yeah. I shouldn't even laugh about this, but uh, yeah. absolute heavy-handed mobster behavior from some of their agents. Right. What's, it's, what's the relationship it, like up there with the BLM? Yeah, you you could say BLM is a it's it's pretty near a cuss word in the state. Uh, you know that they, they do what they do. I wouldn't say they're welcome. Obviously, there are some in uh, you know the environmentalist crowds or whatever that think they provide a service, but uh, I think generally the feeling is it's BLM is a bad word and we'd be just fine without them in this state. Uh, and that's a, that's a fight for a future day is, you know, we're in a state where the federal government actually owns two thirds of our land 
and it's really hard to fund education or anything like that because you know they do own that land and uh, one day we're going to have that discussion where we, we get our lands back i hope because yeah absolutely i so. hope you do too <laughs> I, th I think if i'm remembering the the I, I, i'm not a lawyer you guys hopefully did a lot more study but I think the federal government can only own uh, bases and ports, if I remember correctly, for actual land ownership. Um, yeah. And I think uh, it's like, like buildings where they, I think, I don't even know what the deal is with the buildings, but, but how do they justify owning half the West? I mean, that's, right. that's right. unbelievable. Um, so maybe you can do a, a $10 transaction, all federal yeah. lands return back to state Idaho for, for $10 of that Federal Reserve Bank uh, fake money. <laughs> there you go. Uh, maybe, maybe, I wish it was going to be that easy. <laughs> it could be. It could be. Maybe, maybe if we have the right Congress and the right president, maybe. <laughs> yes, I um I, I'm going to go way off topic, but we, I have a I have a gentleman whose book is um on the shelf who I interviewed a few months ago, and it's kind of a gag. It's kind of a gag, but he's going to be running for president as a bankruptcy court manager. Uh, paying back really? the debts of the United States, um, <laughs> you know, returning the lands to Idaho, uh, you know, that type of thing. And I like that platform already. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. I mean, even though he's got no shot in hell, it's kind of like a wash of a, was it 20, 2012, I think it is, no, 2000, I think it's 2020, 2020, I'm sorry, 2020, I think it's an election for the next presidency. Um, <laughs> but if you're going to, if you're going to spend a year running, what the hell? Let's, let's educate yeah. the masses with uh, describing, you know, the, the dire position of the federal uh, right. uh, country's budget. And uh, maybe bring some education to the populace while he's at it, you know? Right, right. So we're going to have some fun goofing around with, with his right. name is Adam Kokesh and he lives in Nevada, actually. Um, right. <laughs> I think he's presently in Texas right now. All right. Total, total activist. So uh, how can we help you? Um, we have a small network of friends who can dial the phone and, and call on your other legislators to ask them to support your bill. Would that be useful to you for us to uh, call up the troops, so to speak, and, and get them yeah, on the phone? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I would start with, uh, you know, uh, I don't have it in front of me, but the State Affairs Committee, the information is obviously on our legislative wait, wait, uh, website, and you can get all of their email addresses and uh, if, if, you know, if people want to reach out and contact the members of that committee first, that, that's the first step to get it through next week. And, um, you know, I don't know the date yet. I'm hoping maybe Wednesday, Thursday, have that hearing. So if it was before then and let them know they're in support of it and this needs to get done, that would be huge help. Awesome. Yeah. I'm going to, this next, next uh, day or so, I'm going to be trying to produce this video. So it's a little more, uh, uh, viewable has your contact yeah. information and so forth on it so uh, as you've probably familiar you and i are conducting a belligerent act we are right <laughs> are able to be subjected to immediate assassination by yeah. uh, the executive office they're going to be coming through your door right now for filming this video All right yeah. immediate prison imprisonment and no shot at having a trial by a jury uh, effectively right. disappeared like it's a banana <laughs> republic from central america um, yeah yeah. So, so I, I'm willing to take the hit. You know, you're willing to take the hit. Hopefully, I'm the there. viewers will be happy to be belligerent and act and uh, dial <laughs> the phone, call the state affairs uh, members, uh, state affairs committee members, and um, we'll probably do a two two push, two different pushes. One for those folks, and one for the general members. That, that would hoping be great. This hits, hoping this hits the floor. Uh, yeah, I, I anticipate it will. We're hopeful. Beautiful. So, Brian Zonger, thanks, thanks very much for your time and. Yep. Uh, Keep doing the good work you're doing. And um, um, if you have an email address for any other websites, you can just email it to me and I'll, I'll put it in the notes uh, for folks okay. to follow up directly, if that makes sense. Yep, that sounds great. I'll get you some Thank something you very started. much for your time, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. It was great to talk to you. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you very much. You too. Bye. Just give me liberty